Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. It's our unit today on fun. Of course, every day is fun in our program here, but today we're going to have extra fun、mm. doing puzzles.、Uh, puzzles, of course, can refer to those pieces that you put together on the table.、Mm-hmm. They could also refer to other things that kind of challenge your mind. They're usually held in the hand. I suppose the Rubik's cube would be an example of a puzzle. But if you want to be more specific about what we're going to talk about today, you could call it a jigsaw puzzle. Well, we're definitely talking about the real thing, jigsaw puzzles, which usually are a big picture that's been pasted on either cardboard, sometimes wood. I know for little kids, their jigsaw puzzles come with the big blocks of wood, you know, because their little hands can't move things very carefully. But this reminded me of my best friend, and I actually sent her this article today. Because the last time I did a jigsaw puzzle, I was with her family, and they get jigsaw puzzles with thousands of pieces, and then they set up a huge table, and then they work on it slowly. I didn't know people did that. Uh, it does seem kind of strange if you're、uh, not a participant. Her parents love it. You know?、uh, yeah, it's a good way to keep everybody occupied. It、huh. also can give you something to do on a cold day or、yeah. a rainy day. And also, as we're going to find out today, it can actually be good for you, at least for your brain. It's、yeah. uh, pretty good for you mentally.、Mm-hmm. So let's talk about that as we continue to talk about jigsaw puzzles in today's lesson. Let's read the entire contents of our lesson right now. The steamy windows of a cozy cafe obscure the dismal gray weather outside. With piping hot drinks and tasty desserts by their sides, groups of friends huddle over the jigsaw puzzles on their tables, savoring one another's company. These friends know that rainy Saturday afternoons like this are the perfect time for solving puzzles. To many, jigsaw puzzles might seem like an old-fashioned pastime. Relegated to high, dusty shelves, no one reaches for anymore. It almost seems unfair to think of jigsaw puzzles as relics, though. They haven't actually been around for that long. The birth of the jigsaw puzzle can be traced back to an 18th-century cartographer, John Spilsbury. In the 1760s, Spilsbury mounted world maps to sheets of mahogany. And used a handsaw to cut around the country's borders. He then sold his dissected maps as tools to educate the children of the aristocracy about geography. As technology improved, it became easier to cut smaller puzzle pieces on cardboard instead of wood, making jigsaw puzzles much more widespread. These days, researchers are studying the effects of these puzzles on our brains. Studies show that they put both sides of the brain to use. While the left analyzes the individual pieces, the right sees the puzzle's big picture and helps us work intuitively. The connections created between the two sides boost our ability to learn and remember. Meanwhile, successfully completing a puzzle, or even just connecting two pieces, encourages the production of dopamine. This chemical facilitates learning and memory, and activates the brain's reward center, leading to increased feelings of pleasure. With such positive benefits to look forward to, what's stopping you? Choose a design or image you like, and start chasing after those happy feelings by working on a jigsaw puzzle. It's time now for us to discuss the contents of today's lesson. So let's get to it. First of all, we're going to talk about the title here:、mm. the bits and pieces of jigsaw puzzles. Here, this term "bits and pieces"、mm-hmm. can mean a couple of things. It could mean actually small pieces of things. Bits and pieces of my heart scattered all over the floor after you broke my heart. Uh, you could say that in a country song or something like that, but also here, bits and pieces could mean that it's just a little bit of information about jigsaw puzzles. 
Isn't that interesting? We're going to talk about some、uh, little bits of information in today's lesson. So, of course, we did mention jigsaw puzzles.、Uh, those are a certain kind of puzzle that you actually put together with many pieces. Now, here in the first paragraph, it says, "The steamy windows of a cozy cafe obscure the dismal gray weather outside."、Mm. So, we're kind of setting the scene here.、Uh, just imagine it's probably a cold day in winter, or maybe a rainy day. In the spring, or something like that, and it might be a little cold outside. So, because it's a cold outside and it's warm inside,、mm -hmm. well, you've got a temperature difference, and that usually results in condensation on the windows, which means moisture on the windows. So that's why we're describing the windows as being steamy, and that also helps this、uh, feel like a more cozy atmosphere. If something's cozy, it's comfortable, usually warm. Away from some place cold. We've also got the word obscure, which is a verb that just means to block something so you can't see it.、Mm -hmm. And if it does have that condensation on the windows,、uh, it's hard to see through them at all. You have to take a, your hand and rub it over the window, which is kind of a mess, or a piece of cloth. It's dismal gray weather. When I see this word dismal, I always think of Taipei in the winter when it's rainy and cloudy, and oh, all you need is some sun. Actually, there are lots of、uh, cities in the winter that get pretty dismal when they don't have a lot of sun. I grew up in a place that's always sunny. Actually, we hate the sun. We have too much sun in Arizona. But、uh, when I was in New York, wow, we had a lot of dismal gray weather. Where it was just gray when you looked up into the sky, dismal just means that、uh, that mood of kind of gloom or feeling a little depressed. You know, oh, I'm feeling very.、Uh, it's a dismal day. We usually use it to talk about、uh, inanimate objects rather than a person. He's really dismal. I would say he's gloomy or depressed. But、uh, yeah, it's kind of、uh, depressing when we have that gray. Cold weather outside, but look what else we have: piping hot drinks. Piping hot means there's steam coming up from your glass or your cup or your mug. Probably you're drinking hot cocoa or coffee or tea. You've also got some tasty desserts by your side, which sounds delicious. And of course, what everyone needs to feel better is having their friends huddling over the jigsaw puzzles on their table. If you huddle, you kind of take your body and you kind of loom over a table. If you've ever watched American football, between plays, all the football players will gather together in a huddle. So it can be a noun or a verb, and they kind of group together and drop their heads together as they discuss their next play. That's a huddle. It's also a verb to huddle over something, and you're savoring one another's company. To savor something means you really enjoy it, and you don't just let it pass by. You appreciate it. Wow, that's quite a description here of a gathering of friends in、mm -hmm. a nice cozy cafe on a dismal. A、uh, gray day、yeah. in the winter, or maybe in the spring, or something like that. And of course, they are enjoying or savoring everyone else's company. Well, these friends know that rainy Saturday afternoons like this are the perfect time for. Solving puzzles. My goodness! Imagine that they're not actually getting together to stare at their phones the whole time that they're together.、Mm -hmm. They're actually working on something together. They're solving a puzzle.、Mm -hmm. You could also say to put together a puzzle. To me, to solve a puzzle would mean like, mean like solving a problem or something like that, where you have some kind of problem and you need to find the solution. But yes, they're putting together puzzles here. Now, moving on to the next paragraph, it says to many or. For many people,、mm -hmm. jigsaw puzzles might seem like an old-fashioned pastime, relegated to high, dusty shelves. No one reaches for anymore.、Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Maybe your parents or your grandparents had some puzzles that are stuck in boxes, but they're up there on the shelf. They've been relegated to that shelf, which means they've been sent there, and they're supposed to stay there. Relegated. You hear the word relegated when you talk about the、uh, soccer leagues in Europe.、Uh, teams get relegated at the end of the year. I think three teams each year get relegated to lower leagues at the end of each year. In the English Premier League here, but in this particular case, yes, they're just put on those dusty shelves. 
And of course, shelves are high, so they gather dust. So they're dusty. He probably needs to go up there and dust them off. So of course, no one reaches for them anymore. And this is a verb phrase to reach for something. Usually, that means you try to grab something that is higher than you.、Uh, when I used to work at the gas station, for example, and somebody needed a quart of oil, I would need to reach up for a can of pens oil so that I could put it in their car. Mm-hmm. So you can reach out, reach up, reach down, reach across, reach around. Yeah, you can do. Oh, you can reach around somebody. Yeah, there are lots of ways to reach with your arms. So yeah, if they're on a high dusty shelf,、uh, you know when the shelves are really high and it's your turn to do the dusting, it's just not very fun to get up there when it's really high. So a lot of those shelves are quite dusty. They have a lot of dust that comes in from outside. Yeah, and that's where we put things we don't use very much because you don't want to constantly have to get up there. So, a lot of people think of jigsaw puzzles as relics. A relic is something from the past that、uh, just isn't used so much anymore, but sometimes has a lot of historical significance or interest. If you go to a museum, you'll see a lot of historical relics. Which are quite fun. Some of those are very expensive and worth a lot of money because they、um, have historical significance. But yeah, jigsaw puzzles are kind of old-fashioned, I would say. Although when I go home, my、uh, nieces and nephews always want me to help help them put their puzzles together. So kids are still using them, of course.、Uh, they haven't been around for that long, though, and I didn't realize the history behind jigsaw puzzles. I thought this was really interesting. Does sound interesting, and we're going to talk about、mm-hmm. the history of jigsaw puzzles in just a second. But right now, we're going to take a break and listen to our Chinese teacher. Hello, everyone. My name is Tina. 今天文章一刚开始就提到有一群朋友聚集在放置拼图的桌子旁边，然后后面的句子写着 savoring one another's blank wine. 这群朋友坐在那里享受着彼此的什么呢？在这里，在所有格后面可以放一个名词，第一题搭配句意，我们可以选择 B 选项 company。在这里是有陪伴的意思。接着第二个空格。To many, jigsaw puzzles might seem like an old-fashioned blank too. 对许多人来讲，拼图可能像是一个已经过时的什么。那么在这里，我们也需要一个名词。在后面的文章都提到呢，很多人会用拼图来呢杀时间，所以是一个娱乐的活动。搭配句意，第二题我们可以选择 K 选项 past time， 指的就是娱乐的意思。第三个空格，如果呢你把拼图认为是已经过时的遗物的话，其实是怎么样呢？后面文章讲到，其实啊拼图的年代并没有那么久远，所以如果你把拼图看作是一种遗留的产物，似乎是。不太公平的，因为它的年代并没有那么久远。所以第三题放形容词，我们可以选择 I 选项 unfair。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, everybody. We are now going to continue with our lesson for today. So we're talking about jigsaw puzzles and the fact they actually have not been around for a long time. The birth of the jigsaw puzzle can be traced back to an 18th century cartographer. By the name of John Spilsbury. Okay, so that's the birth of the jigsaw puzzle. We're trying to look for its origin here.、Mm-hmm. Uh, who invented the jigsaw puzzle? Who gave the jigsaw puzzle to the world? Well, we are giving the credit to John Spilsbury, who was a cartographer in the 18th century, or that would be what the 1700s,、uh-huh. right? And so, a cartographer, of course, is somebody who draws maps, who makes maps,、yep. so that we. We can find our way around, and his name was John Spilsbury.、Uh, I believe this fella was a British fella. Yeah, so、um, he was the originator, according to what we can、uh, 
see as far as back as history. So someone actually traced back to this、uh, 18th century guy, John Spilsbury, in the 1760s. He actually mounted world maps to sheets of mahogany. Mahogany is a type of red wood, and used a handsaw to cut around the country's borders. To mount something means to put something on top of something else. We often use it to talk about a riding a horse, you know, mounted on top of a horse, or the mounted police, which we had in New York City. There are some areas where it wasn't as convenient to have a car. Or even a bike,、uh, especially Central Park. A lot of the cops would be on horseback there. They also have the Mounties in Canada. It's part of their Royal Canadian Mounted Police. They're kind of cute. They have、uh, cute uniforms too. Anyway, he put probably the paper that he drawn the world maps on. He fastened it or maybe glued it to the top of that piece of wood. Now the wood is quite hard and thick, and then he would cut around the borders of the country. So each country was kind of a puzzle piece. And then you would kind of put them together. It was a way for the rich kids back then. They were the aristocracy; they were part of royalty. It was a way to educate them on geography. So、uh, the poorer kids, of course, didn't even go to school back then.、Mm. But、uh, what a fun way to learn about geography! Yeah, when I was a kid, of course, I had a puzzle of the American states, you know, and、uh -huh. you could put them together.、Oh, cool. Of course, they kind of made the states of Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, Connecticut, etc. Rhode Island,、mm. Massachusetts, all into one piece because they're too small. They're tiny. And so, yes, it was a good way to learn the states. I suppose you could do that with、yeah. uh, provinces of China or of、uh, provinces in Canada or places like that.、Mm -hmm. You can make those kinds of puzzles pretty easily. So that's what he did. He used this handsaw, which is a saw that you cut things by hand around the borders or the edges of those countries. Uh, on the map there, of course, and and then he then sold these dissected maps or used them as tools to educate、uh, kids of the aristocracy. You、so、can also say dissected, dissected, okay, or, okay, yeah, dissected, dissected maps.、Uh, basically, that's what you do to a frog in your science class.、Ooh. You're going to dissect a frog,、hey, cut look, them apart. Uh, yeah, you open them up and you look、mm. at their、um, their organs and stuff. I didn't do that. I did something else. I thought that was too cruel、oh, to do to a little frog. I had to. Yeah, we dissected frogs. Some people have to.、It's、I think、awful. my daughter did that as well. Yeah.、Uh, in the school here in Taiwan, but in any case, yes,、uh, to、uh, teach those rich kids. About geography, you know, what、mm -hmm. does France look like? What's Russia? You know, what's、uh, Mali in Africa or whatever? And as technology improved, it became easier to cut smaller puzzle pieces on cardboard instead of wood, making jigsaw puzzles much more widespread. So the technology improved. I think they probably used smaller, thinner saw blades,、mm -hmm. so they could cut those pieces smaller and smaller with little pieces sticking out. And so they started to use cardboard. Board and not wood, and then these、uh, puzzles were more widespread. They weren't in just in England; they spread to other countries in the world. Now these days, we're coming into current modern time here. These days, researchers are studying the effects of these puzzles on our brains. How do they affect our brains when we're actually putting jigsaw puzzles together? Well, there's good news here. Studies show that they put both sides of the brain, your left brain and your right brain, which have different functions. They put both sides of the brain to use. So this sounds like a really great way to exercise your brain. I was saying to Tom earlier.、Um, seems like little kids and then the senior citizens are the ones who are mostly working on jigsaw puzzles these days. The little kids need to work on jigsaw puzzles to learn their shapes, and also to kind of、um, become more coordinated with their hands and their eyes. And the elderly folks, the senior citizens, some of them are losing their memories, or they're not、um, as sharp as they once were. And this can help them keep their brain active and and quick and sharp, as sharp as you can. So while the left The left side of the brain analyzes the individual pieces. It's the right side, the creative side, that sees the the puzzle's big picture. Oh, what are we making here? Oh, how would this piece fit into that big picture?、Um, a lot of times, 
at least when I did jigsaw puzzles, I would always keep the cover of the puzzle right next to all the pieces, so I could see what I was shooting for, what the big picture actually looked like,、um, and this really helps us work intuitively. So if you're using the right side of your brain, the artistic side, it helps you work intuitively, kind of. Kind of with your gut feeling, it's not so much、uh, that you're measuring things or using math. You're using what feels to be right inside of you, and we refer to that sometimes as our gut feeling.、Uh, sometimes it's referred to as your sixth sense. And、uh, of course, intuition is the、uh, noun form.、Mm-hmm. There, we often talk about a woman's intuition. They always seem to know what、uh, is going to happen or what people are thinking. So, in this particular case, yes, you work with your intuition、uh-huh. or you work intuitively.、Uh, that's the adverb form because it's modi- modifying the word work. Now, the connections created between the two sides of our brains, the left and the right, boost our ability to learn and remember. So, it's good for Your brain as you're growing up, and if you want to increase your reflexes and things like that, well, this might be good practice for you because it does help you learn things faster and remember things faster. Who knows if you put together a puzzle, it might help you memorize English vocabulary words for the next test,、cool. and you'll pass with flying colors. Now, meanwhile, at the same time, successfully completing a puzzle or even just connecting two pieces encourages the, the production of Dopamine, interesting. You can kind of get high putting a puzzle together. So we've got dopamine here.、Uh, that is some kind of chemical in the body, and it helps、uh, speed up the connections between the cells and stuff like that. So、uh, oftentimes we talk about people、uh, who、uh, run or exercise; their bodies produce do- dopamine, and they actually feel、uh, really high, really excited because of that dopamine. Makes you happy. Everybody wants more dopamine. That's for sure. Now, this chemical facilitates learning and memory, and also activates the brain's reward center. If you facilitate something, it means you're making、uh, something work better. Maybe you have two parties and you're a facilitator. You help them communicate better with each other, so you make an action or process、um, easier to accomplish. So this chemical actually helps your learning and memory. That's number one, and number two. It activates or turns on the brain's reward center, and that's what gives us feelings of pleasure and achievement, accomplishment. Everybody wants to feel like they're, you know, doing well, that they've done something, they've been successful. So again, activate just means you make something active, you turn it on, it's starting to operate, activate.、Um, sometimes you'll see it on machines, or if you're watching a movie or a TV show, sometimes、uh, the Computer voice will say, "This has now been activated." So if it's been activated, it's now running, it's operating. So it does help、um, turn on our brain's reward center, and that leads to increased feelings of pleasure, which we're all looking for. Yep, that's what、uh, dopamine does. It、uh, kind of makes you feel happy that、mm. you are accomplishing something.、Uh, you can get dopamine from all sorts of different situations, you know, closing in on a good business deal or something.、Yeah. Boy, that's going to get the dopamine flowing in your brain, and you're going to feel like the king of the world. So here in the next paragraph, here it says, with such positive benefits、mm-hmm. to look forward to. What's stopping you? We're asking that question. Yes. What's stopping you from getting these benefits by putting a puzzle together? Choose a design or image you like and start chasing after those happy feelings by working on a jigsaw puzzle. And I believe this trend here is、uh, very popular in Taiwan. There are lots of stores that sell puzzles. So yes, you can certainly find one and find a nice,、uh, you know, cold Saturday afternoon.、Yeah. Get together with family or friends and put together that puzzle and. Exercise your brain. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation. It's time now to listen to our Chinese teacher. 接着我们来看到第四个空格的句子写着 ，The birth of the jigsaw puzzle can blank for to an 18th century cartographer John Spilsbury. 在这里提到呢，拼图的起源可以怎么样？到一位西元十八世纪的地图绘制员 John Spilsbury 这个人的身上。那么搭配句意呢，我们要去追溯、追源拼图的历史。所以第四题可以选择 C 选项 ，be traced back， 也就是有追溯的意思。第五个空格。
He then sold his dissected maps as tools to Blank Five, the children of the aristocracy, about geography. 那他非常的聪明，他就接着将他的拼符地图呢，作为怎么样这些贵族阶层儿童地理的工具来贩卖。在 to 的后面，我们可以加上动词，贩卖这些东西，当做一种教育的工具。搭配句意，第五题可以选择 F 选项的 educate。后面的句子第六格，前面提到，随着科技的发展呢，拼图就用硬纸板取代了木板，然后再把它切割成较小的拼图，让它变得更容易。这样一来，逗号后面的句子写着 ，making jigsaw puzzles much more blank six。在这里要注意的是 ，make， 然后它的受词是 jigsaw puzzles， 使得呢拼图变得是更加的怎么样呢？我们可以放置形容词 D 选项的 widespread， 也就是有普遍，就是因为科技的发展，所以呢，让拼图被硬纸板来取代，就让拼图更加的普遍受欢迎了。第七个空格前面提到说呢，其实拼图可以帮助我们同时运用到大脑的两个半球。第七个空格前面的句子提到 ，while the left analyzes the blank seven pieces, the right sees the puzzle's big picture. 在这里提到左半边呢，可以帮我们分析怎么样的这个片。或是快，然后后面提到右脑则是可以看出拼图的全貌，因为拼图呢是每一个一个一个单一的拼图块，所以在第七题我们可以看 A 选项 individual， 也就是有单一的意思来解释拼图是每一个都是单一的拼图块。后面第八格的空格写着 ，The connections created between the two sides blank eight our ability to learn and remember. 这样子一来，左右脑之间的连接就怎么样？我们学习跟记忆的能力，科学家说可以让我们运用到大脑的两个半球，当然也就提升了我们学习跟记忆的能力。所以第八题我们可以选择 H 选项的 boost。也就是有提升的意思。除此之外，后面还提到可以 encourages the blank nine of dopamine， 还可以呢刺激多巴胺的什么呢？在这里 ，the 后面可以放一个名词，我们可以选择 G 选项 production， 也就是制造跟生成的意思。看起来拼图的好处非常多。第十个空格。With such positive benefits to blank ten, what's stopping you? 有这么多正面的益处，可以怎么样？那么到底是什么还让你犹豫不决，不去拼图呢？第十个空格，我们可以选择一、e, 选项 look forward to， 也就是拼图有很多我们可以期待的正面好处，所以呢，可以试着来去追求拼图的快乐感受吧。OK， 以上就是今天的课文讲解，谢谢收听。That's it for today. Thank you so much for joining us and enjoy putting your puzzle together. We hope you have a good time. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Bye. Bye.